Ships require huge amounts of fresh air for crew health, temperature control, and elimination of toxic fumes. This drawing shows the complex system of inlets, ducts, and blowers that distributed fresh air to almost every compartment in Battleship Texas. Of all the needs, none came close to the vast amounts of air required by the boilers. These huge heat machines consume thousands of cubic feet of fresh air every minute in order to burn fuel oil and generate steam that powers everything on the ship. Each boiler has its own dedicated air intake that brings in air from outside the ship and an uptake to exhaust high temperature toxic gases to the smokestack. Let's follow fresh inlet air where it comes into the ship through the vent system and into the boiler rooms. We'll then trace high temperature exhaust along its path as it leaves the ship. We'll start by going to the O1 level just above the main deck to look at the inlets for boiler rooms 2 and 4 indicated with X marks on the profile drawing. So I'm in a transverse passage on the O1 level, which is a superstructure immediately above the main deck. And uh, we're just aft of the captain's cabin. And we can see this structure that juts out and a hole has been cut in it. Well, this is the cover for the main air intakes for the uh, number two boiler room, which is the forward boiler room. And if we look down through this open grate, we can get an idea. In fact, let me back it up with the uh, with my flashlight. There we go. And now you can see there's the armored grates below and the, ultimately that leads down to that blower room just above the boiler room and provides air into the boiler room. So now we're standing at the aft end of the O1 level in the superstructure. And here we have the aft fire control tower. But coming off the back of it is this odd projection. And this is the plated over uh, air intake for the aft or the last, the number four boiler room. And so these plates cover that opening, but you can see it's a rather large opening that provided intake for those. Let's now go down to the main deck to see the intakes for Boiler Room 3. This brings up an oddity about the way boiler rooms are numbered on Texas. She has three rooms numbered 2, 3, and 4. Boiler Room 1 was eliminated when the number of boiler rooms was reduced from 4 to 3 during the ship's modernization in 1925 through 26 and designation for the remaining three rooms were not changed. So standing on the main deck level in what's called the Port Air Castle, up here we have, uh, right up here is where the ship's bakery is. Then here we have this kind of shelf looking thing and then this large cover up here. Well this plate was welded over the opening that was the uh, vent trunk for the uh, starboard air vent that fed the uh, center boiler rooms. There's another one on the other side of the superstructure in the starboard uh, air castle. Let's now go to second deck where we will see that the vent trunks do not clearly stand out but are nested between compartments. It takes some careful looking to spot them. So we're in the starboard passage on the second deck and we're standing here at the power shop. If we step in, you can see that there's a large blower motor that sits back but the bulkhead here juts out. This is the uh, air intake for, the, uh, for one of the two boilers in the forward or number two boiler room. There's another one on the other side uh, in another compartment that's in the port passage. So we'll go back and we're going to take a look at where the uh, intake is for the uh, number three or sooner boiler room. And we had looked into the intakes for the number three boiler room and actually here they are. This is the one for the starboard side. It's just that part of the bulkhead that sticks out. There's no access into it from here. For the forward boiler room, it's actually outside of this compartment. No reason for it to be in here. And then the same on the after boiler room. We're now in the uh, port passage on second deck, immediately ahead of the cafeteria line. If we open this little locker door, we can see an armored hatch that leads down into the uh, number three drying room. But what we're interested in is actually this bulkhead. Now, it stops short of as deep as it could be, and that's because it's on the other side of this bulkhead is where the vent trunk is for the aft boiler room. Things become more clearly defined on the third deck, where we can not only see them, but can look inside. 
We will only visit those for boiler room 3 since it's very representative of those that serve the boilers located in rooms 2 and 4. We're here on uh, the third deck in drying room number 3 and you can see that uh, we have this aft bulkhead here and then there's the wall kind of juts out here and then on this side over here. Those are the fresh air intakes for the boilers and if we move around and go up to one, here's a, an open watertight door. And if we look down, we're now looking down into that blower room that we uh, saw that's on the level immediately below. And that's what pressurizes the air into the, the drying room. If we look up, you can see there's a portion of it that extends up. And so the air pulls down through this and continues down to the blower room and then into the boiler room. Now this is actually as far up as we can see inside of these uh, these uh, vent rooms. We pass by the blower rooms as we descend from the third deck to the boiler rooms. In them are big steam turbine driven blowers that were used to draw air in from above and pressurize the boiler rooms in order to force feed the boilers. So we've come down this very short ladder and just directly above us is the drawing room for boiler room three. Let's swing around and here's a small compartment. This is one of the two forced draft boil uh, blowers that uh, forced air into the boiler room. Big Sturdivant uh, steam driven uh, blower. And uh, so you can see this is what pushes air down into the blower rooms, but where does the air come from? Well, let's swing up and look at the overhead. We have this heavy steel grate that actually offers a little bit of armor protection due to its thickness. And uh, so that basically the entire overhead in this compartment is opened up and this is where air is pulled from. Once in boiler room three, we can look up at the overhead and see the outlets where air was discharged to pressurize the room and create forced draft for the boilers. So here we are now in boiler room three. Obviously here's one of the boilers right there. Uh, but what we want to do is kind of continue this theme. Let's talk about getting the good air in and the bad air out. Now you may have seen in one of the other videos how the air came in. Up here is this rather odd looking uh, set of plates with the holes in it. And above that is an air duct. This is where air came into the room. Now there's another one on the other side. Let's see if we can at least fairly easily walk around and take a look at it. And yep, there it is, right there. There are two big Sturdivant forced air blowers that blowed, blowed blew air into the room and then those plates there diffused it. And through this, they actually slightly pressurized this room to create forced draft for the two boilers located here. The pressurized combustion air combined with heated and atomized fuel oil to burn at more than 2,000 degrees. The resulting exhaust gases gave up more than 1,000 degrees of this heat to generate steam in the boiler tubes. From there, the 700 plus degree exhaust gases began their trip out of the ship through the uptakes. We've moved up now to a catwalk that brings us up to the top of a boiler where we can see the ha other half of the equation. Uh, we took a look at the uh, uh, forced air intakes into the boiler room that partially pressurized it and forced air into the boilers. Well, what about the exhaust gases that are generated by the fi boiler fires? Now, if we look below, that's where the firebox is. And kind of trying to peek through the grating, we've got a boiler tu tube nest here, and there's one on the other side, and they come together up here in the uh, steam drum. But now if we swing to the left, what happens to all those exhaust gases after they pass over the boiler tubes? Well, they come up through this. It's called an uptake. There's one on each side. And then let's see if we can swing around. If we move around to the other side, we can then see where they come together and they penetrate up through the overhead and into the third deck level. Let's now go back up to the third deck and to the drying rooms. 
Here in Drying Room 3, we can see not only the uptakes, but we'll stop and take a look at a couple of other unrelated items of interest. So now we're on the third deck level in the drying room for Boiler Room 3. Now I've talked about the drying room before, but if you aren't familiar with it, it's called that for a reason. You see there's a curved structure here, and then when I swing around, you'll see another one on the other side. These are the exhaust uptakes that come from the two boilers located beneath us in Boiler Room 3. Now at one time, all of this here would have been covered with heavy asbestos blankets to serve as insulation, but uh, and this protected it from very high temperature exhaust gases. But even with those in place, the room got up to a temperature of anywhere from 130 to 140 degrees, making it uninhabitable, but it could be used for one purpose, which was to hang laundry to dry. So here's some other features in the uh, drying room for Boiler Room 3. Okay, we showed you the air intakes here and here, and we also showed you the boiler uptakes that ex exhaust gases traveled through to go up to the stack here and here. But uh, here's one thing additional. If you'll see, there's these really heavy steel cross beams and braces over here that go down and are, are very firmly attached to the heavy deck and over here, and if we turn around, we have even more. There's quite a bit of it. They're, in fact, they're doubled up on both sides here and then back where we were initially looking. Well, what the head devil is that for? Because these don't exist in the other two drying rooms. Well, we're in the center drying room of three and they just happen to be positioned directly under the smokestack. Now, all six uh, boiler uptakes come together in the next room up that we're gonna take a look at and then from there they go up into the smokestack. Well, those uptakes in that smokestack weigh a lot. And so this is what this bracing's for. It supports all that smokestack and the uptakes that you see on the outside of the ship. All the weight comes down here where it's transferred into major ship's hull structure. One other thing we can take a look at is down inside this little armored hatch. Okay, so I've opened that hatch now let's kind of get on my hands and knees to where we can peek and look down in there. And what do we see? Well, what you're going to see is a whole bunch of wiring. In fact, this is a monstrous amount of wiring here. And what this does is this is the electrical backbone of the ship. Underneath this protected deck and traveling across the top of the boiler rooms, there's all the major wiring that connects the forward and aft distribution panels together and transfers power from the front of the ship to the back of the ship. So it was actually pretty well protected. What you can't see without getting down in there, which I'm not going to do, is that there are bulkheads spaced along it that seals these wires to where if for any reason any of these did flood, it would not extend through the entire length of the wiring passage. <clears throat> Let's climb a ladder that will take us back to the drying room on second deck, where you will see that things really come together. Okay, so let's go up another level. Uh, with, we do this, we'll be on second deck, and from here, we're going to enter the upper drying room. We're now in the drying room on the second deck, which looks very different than the three on the third deck. Instead of having uh, two uptakes in three rooms, we now have all six uptakes in a single room. And the reason for this is uh, two things are happening. First of all, all of the six uptakes, as you can see, they're angling and they're coming together. And what happens is all six then join up. And let's see if we can find a decent opening to look. But this is where they all come together to go up into the smokestack. And I think it's here, I think, yep, here we go. I'm gonna come over here and maybe we can get a peek up in there. It'll be hard to see, but no, there's just not enough room to really see. But this is basically where the smokestack starts. It's still uh, inside the, uh, the uh, superstructure, but as you can see, this is how all six come together to go into the stack. If we are able to go up to the top and look down into the top of the stack and remove the weather cap that's on there, you would actually see six individual openings for each of these uptakes 
inside the stack. Now one other thing to see is we have a, a conveniently open access hatch leading into one of the uptakes. Now there would have been a heavy asbestos blanket covering the outside since we have temperatures of maybe as high as 700 degrees in there. And uh, so then you also have this thick insulated door that's right here. Inside of that is, is a double wall with an air gap which provides even more insulation. And as we look in, here is an armored grate that kind of protects the, the opening that goes down through the uh, third deck drying room and into the top of the boiler that this one serves. As we go up, it curves and sweeps up. And in the indeterminate darkness up there somewhere is where it exits the top of the smokestack. Unfortunately, this is where we run out of video. As you saw, the six boiler uptakes come together on second deck and are too tightly spaced to allow a peek into what happens within the smokestack. All we can really do is climb to just above the flag bridge level on the foremast and look down at the top of the smokestack. It's an equal misfortune that all we can see is a sheet metal weather cap that now hides the six boiler uptakes that remained separate to the top of the stack. Regardless, we can't leave without talking about one last thing that was of great help to the ship's captain. It was imperative that boilers burn cleanly and without smoke. This was for reasons of fuel economy, keeping boiler tubes clean, and also keeping bad guys from spotting the ship's location at a distance. Since the uptakes remained separate all the way to the top of the stack, it was pretty easy to identify exactly which boiler was making smoke. Since this was something the captain really didn't like, a quick look at the stack and a phone call to the boiler room provided exceptional motivation to the boiler room crew to correct the offending boiler.